Uncover a hero's legacy in the latest What's in Your Pocket episode. Join us with David Claver as he shares the extraordinary tale of John Kiggins, a Civil War hero and the creation of a lifelike exhibit in his honor. This episode dives into the history, valor, and unique connection to Challenge Coins. Stick around and learn about this journey of discovery and remembrance. What's in your pocket? Ooh, yeah. Challenge Coins. That's the rocket. Ooh, yeah. Collect the trainer. Show them off. What's in your pocket? Ooh, yeah. Welcome to another episode of What's in Your Pocket, a podcast about Challenge Coins and the stories behind them. Today, my guest is David Claver. But before we dive in, remember to hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you'd like to be notified when new episodes are posted. David, welcome to What's in Your Pocket. Hey, thanks for having me, Keith. I appreciate it. I am so excited to to share your story. Yeah, I didn't mean to talk over you. You know, as I mentioned in this, I'm a newbie for these coins, even though I'm a veteran. Okay. Uh, I was in the service in 1981 to 1986, okay. and they really weren't talked about that much, uh, at least in, in my realm of the world. Sure. Uh, what what branch were you in? I was in the Army, uh, okay. engineers, and then went to quartermaster. Okay. Was, uh, 51 November, and I think it's a 78 Yankee now, water okay. purification. Oh, Okay. So we, we purify the water so everybody can get out there and drink, be hydrated. <laughs> what um, what was the, the first challenge coin that you can re- remember getting? Well, I got this uh, challenge coin from the museum that we're about to talk about. To talk okay. about. It's Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. Um, and uh, so, yes, he gave me, uh, the curator of that, uh, knew that I was a uh, members of the Kiggins family, which they have an exhibit. Again, we're going to get into that. Uh, and he met me and he asked me if I knew about Challenge Coins. And again, I had f- heard about him since I've been out of service. And he handed me uh, one with the Medal of Honor of Charles Coolidge, who had just passed away, unfortunately, last year, and their mm. family had donated all of his coins back so that they could give them out to people like myself and people that visit the museum. Because the museum cool. is relatively new. Uh, it's only, I think it was started in 2019, 2020, you know, right around the COVID time. So the what, what all does the museum cover? It, co- it covers right from Civil War up to present day war. And I really like the, what, the way they have this uh, set up, and that is it's in order of the wars. So as you walk through, you go in the second floor, and as you get to the second floor, you go into like an amphitheater and they present a video. And when you walk out, my ancestor, which is my second great grandfather, is the first exhibit that oh, wow. they created. In That's the cool. Civil War. So um, it was totally unexpected. Uh, one of my cousins, uh, through I met via DNA, we got together, and she on her own gave these folks all of the information, and they made a lifelike statue of him with his military uh, information, height, uh, beard type, color of hair, color of eyes, weight, uh, regimen, of course. And And we're gonna get to see images of these later? Yes. Awesome, awesome. I have, um, when when you're done with your story about this, you made me think about, um, uh, because he's a a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, and there's there's only what, like 300 and, 330 or three, what is is it? 3,500. Or 3,500, yeah, yeah. 3,500 out of over 40 million servicemen and women that have served. That's crazy. And that's a crazy amount of you know, percentage, to say the least. Um, and what, uh, before I forget, what I like about this museum and, and their mission is not pro-war, you know, the, to promote war, whatever. It's to 
show ordinary people that have done extraordinary things. And, uh, you know, to say the least, this is what this is. Uh, every time I look at this, uh, again, this is a relatively new coin that I had produced. And I've actually, you don't know this, I'm going to surprise this to you. I have version A and version B or version one and version two. Oh. Uh, and uh, I'm that into this now uh, and being able to share these. I bought enough that I'm sharing with my cousins. And, and I actually just gave one to a police officer this morning when we went to the TSA and he was talking about challenge coins of all things. And I had one in my pocket and was able to give it to him, he broke down. And I just, it just was, I don't deserve this. I can't accept this. Yes, you I, can. I, I was just gonna say, I talk about the experience of when he gave him the coin, because I think that's important for people to know that that, it, that aren't familiar with challenge coins. You know, when you, you take a coin, um, I'm looking for the one I had as an example here on my desk, I lost it. When you take a coin and put it in somebody's hands, you know, the, the coin has weight to it, right? There's there's 3D detailers that you can feel with your fingers. All right, so you sent me a couple images, and I have them. I'm going to put them up on the screen so everybody can see them. But uh, tell us what's going on in this black and white image here. Okay, well, uh, John Kiggins was from Syracuse, New York, and he was in the Battle of Lookout Mountain in Tennessee, Chattanooga. It happens to be the same town that the museum is in. Okay. And during that battle, uh, the color guard was shot and the staff was cut in two. And seeing that the Union soldiers were fighting among one another because the fog was coming in, he grabbed the staff, took his belt off, wrapped it around the staff, stood on a stump and waved it so that the Union soldiers would know that, hey, you're shooting at, at Union soldiers. Friendly fire, yeah. Friendly fire. And I I think it's kind of interesting when you talk about the, the flag and don't let the flag drop and, you know, don't let it touch the ground. It kind of came back from this being in war and that is, you don't know who you're shooting. If you don't know who you, you are, somebody could be shooting at you. Yeah. Um, he, he received nine bullets in, in his clothes. Oh, wow. Uh, one in his scalp and uh, one in his thigh. The one in his thigh was the worst, but it's unbelievable that he wasn't wounded any more than he was. Uh, in an article in the Syracuse paper after Many years later, he was interviewed on the 100th anniversary of the Civil War and uh, or 50th, whatever it was. And he said, uh, you know, he was talking and they had captured some rebs, as they call it. And he said, uh, they said, who was up there standing on that stump? He said, I was. He said, how did we not kill you? And his sim reply was simply, I didn't want to die today. <laughs> now there, there's a connection with him with you right yeah he's my second great grandfather okay my two ex -grand grandfather and that's what the whole connection is with this it's my mother on my mother's side that's her first great grandfather and uh we've known about this that we've actually touched the medals they've been donated to the historical society in syracuse okay um, and that was quite a quite a thing emotional thing to actually be able to handle these metals mm -hmm. and um so then we, we 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 give this information my cousin and i my cousin was the lead on this to the people in this that were just starting this museum and they're like yeah we're going to make a exhibit of him this, this is he's worthy of this especially it's in lookout mountain and Here's Lookout Mountain, uh, 100 yards away from us. Um, and we never really heard anything. Again, COVID happened, and my cousin went down there, and lo and behold, and you'll show the picture now, here is a picture of him, you know, a life-size
life-size wax figure of him with his that's uh, awesome the right hair color uh eye color all from his military record um and uh it's you know it's quite emotional what to actually it's a nice piece of art very very much so and uh, that was donated, uh, you know, by by people that went to the museum. You know, a family didn't even really contribute. We since have contributed to the museum, and uh, and so I went there uh, one time, and the curator knew that I told him I was coming, and he presented me with the Medal of Honor from this uh, who the the museum is named after. As I mentioned before, that was my first coin. As soon as he put it in my hand, Keith, I said, I'm making a coin dedicated to John Kiggins. That was it. So um, this is the first iteration of said coin. And of course, it's right off of that picture. Oh, Very wow. difficult to see because... Yeah, pull, pull it back a little bit. There you it's go. It's not colored, and but on the you know. But it has 3D not, detail. It does have 3D detail. You feel that with your fingertips? Yes, it's got weight to it. We've got the rope on the outside, and we put the Medal of Honor on the other side. Oh, that's beautiful! I love that. And I, I was love it. Not satisfied with that. I went and had the color version made. Let's see if I can get not. So shiny. Nice. I think you slide it to your, uh, there you go. There's focusing on it. Yeah, it was focusing on the flag. Just kind of move to the left a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Nice. And then the other side is the same with the Medal of Honor. As we mentioned, 3,500 as of today in 2024 out of 40, over 40 million people that have served. You know, if you've served, like I have, this still represents you, mm -hmm. even though you don't win the Medal of Honor. You go and do extraordinary, you're an, an ordinary person, and I think you're doing extraordinary things when you go serve this country. For that's, sure. That, and so that's why, why this coin will mean something to me, and, and, and that's my story with this coin. Well, David, that was awesome. I appreciate you sharing the story with us. And again, every challenge coin that you look at, you can walk by somebody's office and see a big display with 50 coins on it. And, you know, you're you're mesmerized by looking at all the different ones. But unless you specifically pick one up and ask uh, the person who owns that, hey, what's the story behind this? You'd never know, right? Now, because this was a Medal of Honor one that you did, I want to share, let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, if not, I will, I'll put it in, in edit, but I think it's this one right there. There we go. Can you see that? Yes. This is a coin I just finished designing. Um, it just, just really just went to press. It is a two inch matte nickel finish dual plated so everything that you see silver or light color uh including can you see my mouse moving yes okay so this whole sh image here is going to be 3d matte nickel right you won't see the black color in it because it'll be 3d but this will all be in 3d all the gold text or the text will all be gold the medal of honor will be gold in 3d all these stars will be raised matte nickel and then the blue will all be painted. Uh, the white stripes and the chief stripe will be the matte nickel because that matte nickel finish almost looks like a white color as it is. And then I put the Air Force wings on the other side. And this is uh, for uh, U.S. Air Force Chief Master Sergeant Richard Etchberger. Is it Etchberger? Et yeah, Etchberger. Um, and this is a coin I'm doing for the Berks County Veterans Affairs Organization. But I thought I'd share that with you since oh, we, awesome. we're, that is, we're talking fast. about uh, Medal of Honor stuff. And I just ironically happen to, do, to design a coin for that. But I can't wait for that one to come in. And now on a future episode, when they're in about 30 days, 45 days from now, I'll, I'll share them and show them. So um, if you like listening to people's stories about 
challenge coins and hearing the history behind the ones that we're looking at, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified whenever we drop a new comment. So thank you for joining us on What's in Your Pocket, the podcast for challenge coins. Thanks, David. Appreciate you. Thank you, Keith. I really do appreciate you. Have a good night. Happy New Year. Hey, I got to tell you, I'm thrilled that you're doing this. I mean, all, all kidding aside, this this is pretty this is pretty cool. I mean, I, you I think know, this is TV worthy. Like, like yeah. I can see a half an hour episode where I actually went around and sat down with people, you know, in, in like a absolutely like a reality TV, but like well, you uh, do it in a circle, you know what I mean, or semi circle, and you know, and in, in that. But yeah, as a side note, just so you know that with this, because again, you can't fit everything in there. This guy was a character, of course, you know, X, Y, Z. But he didn't get that medal till he was 55 years old. He was 25 when he when he was in the service, right? Wow. So it was 30 years later. About five years later, the Army comes up and says, hey, we made the new design. Send the medal back, and we'll give you the new one, the one that you see today. Hey, why don't you send the other one back? And some a, people did. And no, that's a collector's item at that point. When they make a new one, that one's that's a you collector's You already know item. what my what my relative did. He said, "No, I treasure this." And about two years later, government said, "Send them all back to those people. We're sending them the medal." So he actually has both medals. You know, even though it's one thing, he has both that's medals. Cool. There, I, I love I love the emotional connection that, that you can have with a coin, right? The coins aren't made out of gold. They're made out of brass. A good quality brass, challenge coin yeah, made out of brass, yep, right? And absolutely. then any of 15 different finishes, so it looks like whatever you want. Um, zinc alloy, stay away from zinc alloy. It's a cheap, light, twangy metal. It sounds cheap. It feels cheap in your hand, right? You want a coin, like you said, like yours, that has weight to it, right? You want to be able to feel that. And when I'm doing coins for um, like nonprofits, you know, I always use the analogy. Um, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. I have ADD and my mind's bouncing. Um, oh, what did I just say? Oh, well, yeah, because you're, I, I watched your first Oh, the, the, the weight that, of it, the weight of it. Thing, yeah, but also with that chip, we're going to actually order some of those. This is me now. I'm going to order some of those from you for that museum so they can go ahead <laughs> I'm all see. over it Keith let me see if I can I'm, find a slide because I want to show you one that I did for the Pennsylvania State Police that's an NFC coin and it's a coin they did for um, the fallen officers and the, the trooper memorial wall so one side is, is bright purple it's a matte gold coin yep. and it's the Pennsylvania State Police these are all my state police coins. I'm digging through this block. I don't think it's in here. Uh. So that's that's my idea because they really don't advertise, um, you know, uh, fundraising and so forth. They have yeah. a, a brick out front that you can put, you know, they can engrave in it and then they put it in the walkway, which mm -hmm. is nice, but. You know, they're so asking what, $100 what to $1,000, you know. Once you buy a, a brick and stick it in the ground, it, it's there yeah. and people walk it, on it, but you, you don't really get anything you, else from it. You do a coin with an NFC chip in it and you link to whatever the story is about. So the state police one, if you take your smartphone and touch it to the state police coin, goes right there, the coin tells, tells the your phone, open a browser and go to this website and the website it goes to is the law enforcement memorial wall for the Pennsylvania State Police, and it shows you every single name of every trooper that was killed in the line of duty. Literally, it just pops up on your phone, and you can scroll through and see year by year all the names of troopers that were killed in the line of duty. And that create like I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. I'm not being, you know, yes, dramatic. Absolutely. I'm just saying like it's it's there's an emotional connection because you know it it's. You can get a challenge coin and put it on display and it can sit there and look pretty and people that walk by and see it will see it, you know, but when you have a challenge coin that can do something and go beyond just the traditional, 
Uh, you know, it's still a coin that you carry in your pocket, you know, because it means something to you. And if anybody's interested in whatever you're talking about, you can reach in your pocket and pull that coin out and put it in their hands. And that is such a powerful tool to take any challenge coin and put it in somebody's hands. I, um, for the last 20 years, have used challenge coins as business cards. And as a media consultant, I, I meet with people and talk about their, you know, radio or digital advertising program that they're looking to do. And when I'm done, I usually give them one of my coins and whatever we're talking about, when I hand them that coin, conversation stops and I'm looking around my desk for it. <laughs> I literally have coins laying all over the place. Um, the conversation stops because their attention is focused on looking at the coin. There's weight to that, right? They feel that. I tell um, charities, you know, that weight that you feel in the coin symbolically represents some of the weight of the charity that I'm helping carry by carrying this in my pocket. Because by carrying it in my pocket, is keeping it top of mind, right? It's, it's, it's absolutely there. Me. It can't, it, it's not on your phone, even though it is. It's not, I have to get it out. Right. They can look at this first. Yep. And then go. Pip, look at that magic. Hey, I'll give. I'll give do you the five bucks. I'll give you the twenty-five bucks. Do you know yeah. the 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 story behind the smart coin, like where it came yeah. from? Yeah, from your chair. The magic you know, the, trick. The yep. Yeah. So I, I used to be. I was a professional magician. I mean, a magi magician my whole life. My great grandfather was a professional magician. So I just had a love for magic. Um, Opened and ran my first coin company. Sold my first coin company. Opened a magic shop. Did that for maybe 10 years. Uh, maybe not quite 10 years. From about 2004 to 2011. And I just realized there's not, not a lot of money in magic. Because, you know, I'm buying stuff. I'm putting it on the shelf. And I'm waiting for people to come in and buy it. And it's, it's usually, you know, a certain age range that moms are bringing them in. Look, so it's. It's not even like they're buying big stage illusions or it, it, it's, yeah. So get out of doing that, but still have a love for magic. And, and you do I, music like me. I did magic and music. Yeah. Well, music's my, gotta, music's my new thing. All if, Check out my channel for all, all my new songs because. I got it. I got it, dude. I'm already as, as an artist, right? I, I paint, yes. I draw, uh, my oh, art is expressed in my coin designs. And now with AI, that's enabled me as an artist to just go in a new direction. Like, so I can creatively write something or have an idea of what I want to write from a song perspective. I can use chat GPT now to help rhyme things and, and you know, help it just flow better and sound better. And then uh, I have a, a membership for Suno, S-U-N-O dot AI, which is a music generator. Um, you can you can use it totally free. You can put in lyrics and you can use them for personal use all you want. But I, like I want to publish the songs. I want to do something more with them. So because I'm a member, it, it says in their terms and services that um, anybody that's a paid member, anything that you create on here, we release to you 100 percent. So every song that I've produced out of the 18 or 20 in the last two or three weeks have all been. 100% mine. Music, I lyrics. I don't got any time. I'm retired and I'm busy, but you're over the top. But Keith, I am definitely going to talk with them because they don't know about this coin. I'm going down in February. You know, the museum doesn't. And okay. I've got I've got 100 of them to give to them so that they can give out. They, ha they do uh, field trips with the kids, of course. It's gonna be out. I'm telling you, it's it's that it's watching it's watching that initial reaction when you hand somebody a challenge coin. Well, that I couldn't really believe makes that it I did go. that today because it was totally. It was pro. It's my first one non-family, right? You know, it's my first non-family giving it up. Yeah. And when this guy from TSA is treating my mother, who's 85, like a queen, you know, not rushing her, and you know. N -n -n I'm like, yeah, I got something for you. You know anything about Kajan's? Well, I got a collection of channels coins. I said, well, here's another one. And I gave it to him, you know, we're in the palm, you know, like you're, I'm, I'm out of control with this thing. And like I said, I'm going to talk with them. Uh, you know, I'll purchase them and they can deal with those whatever way they want as far as, you know, using those NT and NFC coins 
uh, for their charity. I have I have a way to help them. Uh, I mean, like I, I don't know specifically who to go to. They would know who who they deal with from a from a corporate sponsor type thing. But a challenge coin is unique in that it only has two sides, right? Let a corporate sponsor put their logo on one side of the coin as a thank you for funding to mint the coins. That way, when they sell them, every dollar that they sell them for goes to their fundraiser. There's no cost involved because they're all paid for, and it's just a matter of how long it takes them to sell however many the corporate sponsor wants to make. Yeah, that was on your first podcast. I've been why I watched. You follow it. I, yeah, people. I'm not used to that. I'm used to posting stuff and, you know, three people watch it. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm new to this. And so I joined the Facebook group just to see what was out there. Um, and I've got two members of my family that are in the police department and they oh, both nice. know about these things. Yep. So I bet they both have coins for their department. One guy's in the FBI. So okay. I don't. So he's got some probably wild ones. Uh, he, we haven't uh, we haven't chatted yet, but he, he's going to be surprised when he gets one of these. Because um, I just think it's it's a like you said. Without this, how do I tell somebody about that story? Yeah, I mean you don't just walk up to somebody and say, "Hey, you know my double great grandfather was a Civil War hero." It just doesn't mash. Like, uh, could you get it? To, could you get the rubber room ready for this dude? He's, you know, I didn't ask him for this, but you hand him something like this, and they're like, "What is that?" And then I show him the picture of the actual thing, and they're like, "Wow!" So, like I said, I couldn't even wait to get another one. You know, as soon as this one came in, I'm like, "They're oh. very addictive." And and if you're the like. Okay. You're on the giving side too, so I understand completely what it's like to, you know, you get a box of a hundred in, and you just want to put them in people's hands because you know it lights up, their, it lights them up, you know. It lights them we'll up. Appreciate them. Exactly. So again, back at you for this. This is this meant a lot to me that you would want to do this, Keith, um, because I I know my cousins are going to lose their mind. They are, they're, they're there's only one cousin that knows about this it was christmas it's thanksgiving christmas i haven't been able to get these to anybody only one my uncle and my mother uh so when they get this and then i'm going to show them the podcast when you get it edited they're gonna they're gonna be all right we got to go to that museum all right we got to go to that museum maybe the museum will make a, a statue of you to put beside your great great grandfather. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. In <laughs> honor of like, bringing attention to the museum the, from all the, the pe- all the people that are going to go see it. Bring the price down, Keith. What they did, they have done, is they actually gave me some special status on Facebook, which was kind of neat. You know, some top contributor thing or whatever. I don't need any. The, the other again. I, I'm hoping that people go to this museum too. You know, I mean that. Plug you know, like that again. Say the name of it. Say the name of it. it. It's um. I have to pull that up. It's uh. Charles H. Coolidge National Medal of Honor Heritage Center. Okay. It's a long name, um, and this is what the. Um, oh, okay. That's their, and that's. That's him. That's Charles. He unfortunately passed. Um, and the family lives in Chattanooga, and they gave him the coins. And I was honored that they he would give me that coin from the the uh, person that would that this was uh, uh, you know named after. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is going to be great. I mean, I I do appreciate it. I've taken enough of your time. No, um, good. It's all I good. Definitely. I will definitely get back with you after February because I'm going to find out what, what they want to do and, and uh, what that, because I'll get the book, read that, and then so I can give them the information about it, and then I'll give them to you so you can say, there, yeah, this is what we can do. Yeah, listen, and, listen, my my help is free for any charity that wants, you know, wants to stick their toe in and say, you know, but I don't really know how to market it. I don't know how to 
I like I, I had that all figured out in my head, and it, it really just creates a perpetual donation machine. And you could argue or be a naysayer and say, oh, well, not everybody's going to do it. Okay, I'm not worried about the people that aren't going to do it. If they're not going to do it, they're not going to do it, right? But, yes, but like you said on the first one, don't give that person that coin. Meaning right. those people in in the position of the board or whatever probably know who gets the most contributors. Well, you, you give it to those. You know? No, 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 no. The the coins. The so if, say somebody wanted to be a brand ambassador, right? They would buy the coin and they would have the coin that they can carry with them when they're showing people. They're putting it in people's hands. But they're not buying like a hundred of them and giving them out. They're just buying no, it's no, their coin. Right. They're just share. Yeah. Like if you have a favorite coin that you're carrying and you just want to show somebody rather than give it to them, let them hold it. Tell them about why you support them, and then get them to take their smartphone and touch it to the coin, and then boom, <laughs> there's your donation page for your charity, right there. Yeah. It's, it's it's here. You're this close. I can't get a horse any closer to drink water than. You know, to bring somebody it's right to the fun. donation page of your charity. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so. All right, I, I appreciate you.